shy. Subscribe to that guy. Everyone, gather around, take your seats, grab some popcorn, maybe some wine, because this is going to be a lengthy one. But you already know what to expect, so I'll keep this intro short. Smoking on top fives. Stop playing, I'm that guy. Welcome to Degrassi. Whatever it takes. Fitz is a big bad bully. We always need one. There's a lot of bullies in this show, but so far this guy is one in the race. Most of the other bullies are just misguided losers, and some even change after a while, like Johnny, Spinner, and even Lucas. But Fitz is giving killer vibes. Aw, oh, don't you two look cute. Fitz is first seen when he's making fun of Connor. After that, he mocks Riley because Riley got a stiffy after looking at the lifeguard instructor. But I mean, he noticed Riley's boner, so interesting. Fitz also makes fun of Marco when he comes back as a student teacher. Call me Marco. Mr. Del Rossi is my dad. Is he a midget too? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what they say, the shorter the man, bigger the brain? How tall are you? Oh! All of those moments showcased his bully status, but his next storyline is why he's actually remembered. He's standing in a parking space that Eli was trying to park in, and instead of moving, he rips off the skull of Eli's car and kicks him in the balls. You want a war? You're gonna get one. Eli makes it seem like water under the bridge, everything is cool. He gives Fitz a fake ID that resembles someone on the most wanted criminals list. And after getting set up, Fitz gets arrested. Fitz bullies the shit out of Adam, but I'm gonna save that story for Adam's character. After he bullies Adam for a little bit, he starts trying to be fake cool with him because him and a few friends are starting a fight club. The first rule of fight club is, you do not talk about fight club. Obviously this is not a sincere offer and Fitz was just mocking him still. Eli and Fitz are still beefing. The Vegas night dance is coming up and Fitz tells Claire he'll stop bullying Adam and Eli if she goes on a date with him. But don't you worry, when we have sex, I'll be gentle. Eli thinks about poisoning Fitz. Eli ends up poisoning Fitz anyway. There is only one thing next, revenge. Fitz brings out a knife and threatens to stab Eli, but he intentionally stabs the wall. He goes to prison for like 10 episodes. He runs into Claire and tells her that when he was in jail, he found God. Eli tells Claire to stay away from Fitz because she's dangerous and Claire ignores him. Fitz starts sending her a bunch of emails and Claire gets weirded out. Late at night, Fitz shows up at Claire's doorstep. Fitz also tries to tell Claire he loves her and she should dump Eli for him. And then suddenly Eli shows up. Uh, see? Happen? Eli is mad and leaves, and Claire kicks Fitz's stupid ass out of her house, but in a nice way because it's Claire. And luckily, we never see him again. I know I can make it more bullies, more bullies! Owen is not my favorite character in Degrassi. He's actually closer to the bottom. Owen makes fun of Zane for being gay. Owen also publicly tells everyone that Riley is gay by writing some not too nice stuff publicly. Riley wants to fight Owen, but Zane asks Riley not to. Riley hears him and instead of fighting him, he only threatens to fight him. But Owen responds by jumping Zane. A lot of mean people have attended Degrassi. After Allie gets pissed at Drew for cheating on her, Owen offers to pay her $50, Canadian, to have sex with him. How romantic. Allie is down before she realizes how rapey Owen's vibe is and is against the idea. Drew interrupts them and Owen gets blue balled. When the school goes into lockdown, Drew's mama is looking for him and Owen just randomly blurts out, he's having oral sex in the boiler room. What a guy. Owen sexually harasses Anya, but it's okay because he acknowledges what he did was wrong, so everything's good. He thinks Anya and him are friends now, so he tries hugging her from behind and she gets upset. Why are there only two options for girls? Either she likes you or she's a bitch. What's wrong with you? No, what is wrong with you? I don't know if you guys even noticed, but we're actually watching the beginning of a beautiful love story. Anya is in a sad state after she breaks up with this random doctor and Owen starts comforting her and then they start making out. Then Owen makes a social media post about them hooking up. He tells her he doesn't want her around Holly J anymore. I don't want you hanging around her. You can't tell me what to do. Trust me, it's for your own good. <laughs> Who the fuck? Then he leaves Anya alone at a party after finding her sniffing coke. They break up mostly because Anya is leaving for the army. Then we find out Owen has a little brother, Tristan, and Owen tries giving him some advice. Owen is pushed to the background around this time. Maya makes a fool out of him. Eat this. You know, I think you're gonna want this back. Keep it. It's the most action you'll get all year. 
<laughs> Owen cares about his brother and suddenly everything he did in the past is forgotten, right? Owen graduates. Do you guys remember Jake? Who the fuck is that guy? Jake is the son of Glenn. Glenn is going out with Claire's mom. You guys see where I'm going with this, right? What are you doing, step bro? When they are at the dot hangout, Claire sees Eli and tries to make him jealous. They're broken up currently. Later on, she starts tweaking on Eli and her and Jake go for a walk. Here, here, let me try something. Whoa, what are you doing? Shut up for a sec. Sounds like consent to me. Shortly after this, they begin dating. But obviously they can't tell their parents. Jake and Eli have tension over Claire, but who cares? Jake finds out his dad is gonna get married to Claire's mom. Whoa, that person has really gotten him or herself into quite a predicament. Now they have to break up. So he invites everyone to this cabin. Great episode, by the way. And he kisses Allie, Claire's best friend. Claire just so happens to be strolling by. Wow, how convenient is fucking that? But Jake tells Claire that Allie kissed him. He was innocent. They get back together, blah, blah, blah. Jake and Claire argue, blah, they break up. Katie is sad because her and Drew broke up. So Jake and her make out. I'm noticing a common theme here. Jake is like an ultimate opportunist. He just waits for the girls to break up and then he's just like, hey, need a shoulder to cry on? Katie and Jake are now officially dating and the crowd goes mild. I'm here to tell you right now, we don't care. Let me tell, right, let me tell you, <laughs> we don't care. Yep. Jake was also a part of the brawl at Fiona's place. He's also really cool with Mo. Claire feels like it's unfair that Eli can never stay late at her house, but Katie can. Jake tries to help out and she thanks him by ratting on him. Katie and Jake are a forgettable couple, in my opinion. They break up because Katie keeps ignoring Jake and also she's chasing the bag. Later on, Jake basically just gets high every day. I was gonna clean my room until I got high. He graduates high school at the end of season 12. I know I can make it hey, look at Mo back there before he gets promoted to the main cast. At first, Mo seems a little too involved in the Sav and Mrs. O relationship. You liar. Oh, you said nothing happened after you ran into her at the concert. Mind your motherfucking business. Mo runs for school president, and you know how most politicians have a slogan like, yes we can, or make America great again? Well, Moses. And I won't hook up with your boyfriend. Put that on a t-shirt. Mo plays football and keeps getting his ass ran over by Connor. Mo gets paired up with popular girl Marisol with some random dating thing, and eventually she starts to really like him. But she's getting cold feet, and she says they're not official. It's not like we're even official, official, right? No, I know, and it's like, that doesn't even hurt, like, at all. Mo asks her on a date, hoping that that'll get them closer together. So he decides to take her to the dot. Time for us to have our first date. Really? I'm so excited. When? Throw in reverse and put me out of my misery. They do make it official soon after. Marisol finds needles in Mo's bag, and the first thing she thinks is drugs. But no, it's insulin because Mo has diabetes. Later on, when a character dies, Mo makes a poorly timed joke. Yeah. Sorry guys, I am not good with this stuff. Mo is in a band called Whisper Hug. Lame. Honestly, Mo doesn't really add anything to the story, but he's kind of funny. He goes to prom all sad because he thinks him and Jake won't be friends after graduation. Hey, handsome. What? He also appears once in next class. So apparently Katie is a popular junior and we've never seen or heard of her before. Katie works for this newspaper club, the Degrassi Daily, and Claire wants to join the club. Katie almost allows Claire to join, but then she sniffs out the drama. See, Katie goes out of her way to avoid drama and you are drama. This starts a little back and forth rivalry between Claire and Katie mostly consisting of Katie ignoring Claire. Hi, Katie. Katie! Katie! Did you get the email I sent? Ow. Katie! Katie really doesn't like Claire. But after Claire tattletales on her, she lets her into the club, but she still hates Claire. Katie starts writing an article on the Degrassi Fight Club, mostly because she's interested in Drew, and basically gets the club shut down. Drew gets into a huge argument with her and storms off. A few moments later, Drew apologizes, but he's still sad about the club being gone. I hear you need a sports reporter. 
If it means you're forgiving me for accidentally narking you out to Simpson, I'll let you try out. However, Drew is still dealing with an event that happened over spring break, and he has a PTSD dream that basically messes with his head. When Katie asks if everything's okay, he tells Katie to leave him alone. Katie ignores this, though, and follows Drew to find him almost murdering someone in a cage fight. She talks to him after and eventually teaches him karate to calm his ass down. They start dating, but Marizo likes Drew, so Katie doesn't tell her. Katie's running for class president, and at first Marizel is all team Katie, but then she finds out her and Drew are a thing. She then decides to run against her in the race. It'll get worse before it gets better. Marisol calls Katie a backstabber. Katie calls her a homewrecker. Who stole KC from under his baby mama's nose? Marisol one-ups her though because she tells everyone at school that Katie is bulimic. Katie is bulimic. That's not true. <laughs> Katie is obviously upset by this, and Marisol tries to make it up to her by withdrawing from the race and telling everyone that she lied. Now we can be friends again. Katie is a virgin and isn't ready to have sex, and Drew says he's okay with it. For now. Some stuff happens with Drew's ex, Bianca, but we aren't there yet. But just know that Katie is fucking pissed. I'm trying to concentrate here. Thanks. Because she's jealous. I always love the ensemble episodes in this show. A lot of the characters are usually separated, so whenever we get them all together, it's really enjoyable. Basically, a bunch of crazy shit happens in this episode, and it ends with Katie finally trusting Bianca. Katie is a soccer player, but she has an injury and tries fighting through the pain by codeine dreaming. I'm just kind of worried. Hey, these tryouts, they're making you crazy. Remember when I said Drew and Katie were dating? Well, Drew's mentally checked out right now and is basically dating Bianca, but he's too much of a pussy to break up with Katie. So instead, he takes her virginity. You gotta be kidding me. They break up shortly after this, and obviously, Katie is completely understanding after egging Bianca's car. Somebody wasted an entire carton of perfectly good eggs. Did you know they're starving children in Africa, you dumb bitch? Katie dates Jake, but I kind of talked about it already, and also, this relationship was pretty boring. She also dyes her hair and gets bangs. After she dates Jake, she gets a lot less entertaining, but I guess that's good because she's in a better place mentally. Katie almost hooks up with a random guy named Darren because he offers her $20,000 to have sex with her. It'd be funny if it weren't so pathetic. Jake is furious, and their relationship is over. A lot of the later Katie storylines deal with Maya, and I'll cover some of those much later. Katie also reappears a few times in Next Class. Riley brings Marisol as his date to this barbecue, but keeps calling her Marilyn. This is Marilyn? Marisol. Whatever her name was. So right after she starts getting the hots for the father of the year, Casey, and also has a big crush on Drew. Next season, she gets promoted to the main cast because we need more black characters, preferably black woman characters. There aren't too many in Degrassi. Casey comes into her restaurant looking for a job and they get cool with each other and everything is completely platonic. Jenna wanted me to get a job, but now that I have one, she complains I'm working all the time. It's like I can't do anything right. Oh, tonight's Hawaiian night. Everybody's getting laid. <laughs> Lays. <laughs> like the flower necklace. They hook up. Katie starts dating Drew, and Marisol takes it personally, literally for no reason. I'm glad I chose Drew over you. He's been so supportive for now. Katie and Marisol get locked in the shed together after getting high as fuck. As you could imagine, the paranoia was insane. Mo crushes on Marisol, and I'd be lying if I said that they didn't have a nice relationship, even though at first she was mostly hot and cold with him. Marisol tries to be there for her friend Katie after Drew kinda cheats on her. Oh, look who it is. The liar, the bitch, and her slutty wardrobe. Marisol and Katie have a little tag team feud against Imogen and Fiona. Girl, you're fooling yourself. One day she's working as a waitress and Zig and Tori are her customers. Welcome to Little Mistakes, Niners. What can I get you? I'm broke as shit. Before they could pay, they vanish. And like that, he's gone. But Marizel makes Zig pay up when she sees him at school the next day. Or I tell Tori and then send Mo to collect. And he's a wrestler and a football player. Marisol thinks Moe's doing drugs, but he isn't. Now that Jake and Katie are broken up, it ruins the dynamic between their group. We've all been there. Marisol graduates and is still dating Moe. Fiona is transferred to Degrassi in season nine and has no friends. Her first real storyline was when she started dating Riley 
Secretly, Fiona knows he's gay, but dates him anyways because she got some stuff to figure out too. But when Fiona's at his house, he tries to have sex and she's not with it because she thought he was gay. If I thought you were straight, we wouldn't be doing this. Riley gets mad at her and tells her to get out of his house. So I hope you'd be into having a real boyfriend. Excuse me? I mean, once I'm cured. Cured? Are you insane? You can't cure homosexuality. Yes, you can. Wow. You really hate yourself, don't you? Too bad you can't cure, bitch! We don't talk anymore, okay? For the rest of season nine, Fiona is mostly around Declan while he deals with Holly J stuff because she has no friends. Declan's not like most guys at Degrassi because he has a twin sister. But I'm gonna ignore the twin says plot line for now because that's more of a Fiona story. Okay, so let's talk about that storyline now. Fiona and Declan find out they're moving back to Manhattan. Fiona is thrilled. I hate it here. I wanna go home. But Declan isn't because he's still dating Holly J and he's really happy in his relationship. In Degrassi goes Manhattan. Holly J and Declan are spending all this time together and Fiona is jealous. Fiona starts playing mind games with Holly J because she wants her gone. You want inappropriate? Don't, 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 don't do it. Don't, don't do it. That is inappropriate. Also, I think it's important to mention here that Fiona is kind of an alcoholic. Okay, so we got weed, alcohol, codeine, meth. Am I missing one? I got ketamine, meth, MDMA, Adderall, yep. heroin, coke. I'd say throughout 70% of the entire Manhattan storyline, Fiona was drunk. I'm obviously exaggerating, but you get me. So now she's trying to sober up and apologizes to Holly J. They become friends. This next storyline is very uncomfortable. Fiona is dating this guy, Bobby, who is abusive. Let's just skip the fluff. He hits Fiona and he throws her down the stairs. On top of that, he's cheating on her. A well-rounded piece of shit. Fiona then puts some makeup on and tries to prove that he's beaten her before and posts it on face range. It's like Degrassi's version of Twitter. Declan doesn't believe her and she leaves Manhattan to come back to Degrassi. She casually drops $4,000 while shopping on her computer during lunch. Holly J is shocked and steals from her. Fiona forgives her and makes Holly J her friend. Fiona goes to a therapist after what happened with Bobby. Fiona is still dealing with the whole Bobby situation and begins drinking again. Holly J tries helping her through both drinking and the trial. Adam starts crushing on Fiona and Fiona is aware that Adam is transgender and is accepting of it. There's a little storyline in between about Adam enabling Fiona, but it's not really that important. Fiona wins the trial against Bobby and kisses Holly J. Somebody stop me. Adam thinks the reason Fiona was drinking was because of him, but no, she's just an alcoholic. I like this. It's so much better that you're both. Both what? I told you, it doesn't bother me. I like that you're the best of both worlds, like boyish and girlish. No, you don't want me. Face it, Fiona, you want a girl. Adam gets upset and leaves. Oh, by the way, Fiona. I think you're a lesbian. Holly J thinks Fiona is into her, so she distances herself a little bit from her. Fiona goes to this art class and has a crush on this girl, Charlie, but because Fiona is new to the lesbian scene, she's kind of hesitant to go all the way. So she's taking it easy for now. Fiona finds out she doesn't have enough credits to graduate, so she's back to no friends again. Oh, man! But now that her lady friend Charlie is homeless, she's able to move into her big-ass apartment. Rich privilege. What's that? Mr. Tuxedo Pants? You have a cat? We have a cat? You need to leave! However, Fiona is still not ready to have a relationship yet, and it's awkward with Charlie living there, so Charlie moves out, and yeah, that's it for them. And now that character Charlie is completely wiped from my memory. Oh shit, never mind, she's back. Around prom time, Fiona's looking for a date and Charlie is already taken. And Fiona is not too happy about it. She lets Charlie's cat loose. Are you serious? Why would you do that? Then she goes to therapy because she needs it. Fiona is also a director on that play that Eli is working on. Now in search for new friends, she tries to be cool with Katie and Marisol, but then she realizes that they are not so nice. Fiona is cool with Imogen though, and definitely is digging her vibe, but Imogen doesn't like her yet. They eventually kiss at a carnival, aww. And next season, they're dating, kinda. Dallas is flirting, heavy. Look, I'm flattered, but not interested. Well, I love me challenge. And I love me girls. Drew moves into her apartment for a little while. Fiona and Imogen are still dating, and there's a big ass brawl that happens at her apartment that we'll cover in Eli's story. Imogen's mom is just a wee bit mean, but Fiona tries getting on her good side, and she does. 
But Imogen is not too happy because she feels like her mom is being nicer to Fiona than her own daughter. So does this break them up? Obviously not, things are fine. Drew moves out and Fiona is sad. Shortly after, someone robs Fiona's apartment. She tries buying a gun to make her feel safer, and then the people selling the gun beat her up and rob her. Fiona graduates as the valedictorian. How is she the valedictorian? Anyways, her and Imogen break up, mostly because they're on different life paths, and that's the end of the coins. There's a lot of bullies in this graduating class, including Bianca. Along with fucking with her classmates, she sells pills on the side, and she's also a bad influence. Bianca is also the one who exposes Adam. What the hell? Are you a girl? Drew is currently dating Allie, but my boy is down bad. He constantly tries convincing himself that he's not into Bianca, but his eyes speak a different story. Bianca sends some sexy photos to Drew, and Allie sees them on his phone. Drew has to decide between staying faithful to his girlfriend or hooking up with Bianca. This is getting out of hand. Now there are two of them. Drew decides to use his second brain, and Bianca gives him head in the boiler room. Allie and Drew are through, so let's make way for Bianca and Drew. If you ask me up there with Manny and Craig, at least when we're talking entertainment-wise, Drew is pretty popular, but Bianca is not. When Drew invites Bianca to hang out with some of his friends, Jenna doesn't want her around. Come on, Jenna, chill out. Dude, don't talk to my girlfriend like that. She's being unreasonable. Oh, better that than a skank who takes boys to the boiler room. Uh, Jenna, I don't think you should be talking, to be honest. Previously, before her time on the show, Bianca was dating this criminal Anson who just got out of jail and is not done with Bianca yet, even though she's clearly moved on. Anson tries to sexually assault Bianca, but Drew comes in for the save. Now he's getting his ass kicked. So Bianca knocks Anson out with a cinder block. Oh, by the way, she killed him. There are some complications, though, because he's a drug dealer, and then this guy Vince shows up. Strapping guys, this shit gets fucking crazy. Vince makes a deal with them, but Drew and Bianca are not mercenaries. Drew tells the police and is now being hunted. You can run, nigga, but they gonna find your ass. Drew tries to stay away from Bianca because he thinks that'll keep him safe, but eventually they do find Drew and almost kill him. Bianca continues to stay with Vince to keep Drew safe, so a lot of her storylines at this point kind of consist of her and Vince selling drugs. Now Bianca's doing whatever she can to get out of the situation, and she starts doing some after-school activities. When Bianca goes to prom, Vince shows up with a gun, but everyone survives, mostly. Katie is currently dating Drew, but Bianca understands and respects that. She waits until Katie is in the hospital to make a move on Drew. Bianca and Drew are dating once again. Cam tries flirting with Bianca. Do you, do you want to get out of here? Uh, go get some sex? <laughs> <laughs> Bianca also learns that Drew is not academically sound. That's a nice way of saying he's going to get held back. Drew wants to get married, and Bianca is all for it, but Drew's mom is not. They rebel, obviously. They're teens. But then they come to their senses later on. Bianca goes off to university and appears a few more times in season 13. But she's in college now, and there's a lot more fish in the sea, so she gives him back her engagement ring. Dodge the bullet there. You guys hear that? That's the sound of Eli fans going berserk. Eli rolls into Degrassi like a motherfucking boss. Now, I will warn you, I won't cover all of Eclair right now because I want to save some things for later, but I'll get to most of it. Claire is infatuated with Eli, but she can't really get a read on him at first, but they're so in love that they start kissing a few episodes after they first met. Eli is also best friends with Adam. Their first encounter is during the Hands on a Van contest for Sav's tickets. Eli starts beefing with Fitz, and Fitz almost breaks up Eli and Claire. Almost. During his feud with Fitz, we see Eli's got some problems he needs to deal with. Some internal problems that might show up again? Hmm, let's see. Eli is extremely prideful, so whenever Fitz messes with him, he tries to match that energy. It almost gets him stabbed, but Eli is fine. Claire is mad at Eli. Three weeks and I'm still in the doghouse. I only mess with Fitz to defend your honor, and if I know that psycho would pull a knife... Eight, nine, ten. Now you're forgiven. You are drama. I am not drama. Claire is dealing with some family stuff and uses Eli to piss her parents off. Kinda fucked up. By the way, I saw in the comments from my last video a lot of people were making fun of the Sav and Anya talk. So strap in, 
It's gonna be a long ride. Fitz is back asking for forgiveness from Claire and Eli gets upset. Fitz did try to stab him, so I'd say he's justified. But Claire and Eli are good. Eli is a little intense with Claire and she feels like he's smothering her. He also shoots pictures of his dead ex-girlfriend to cope with her passing and he also kind of blames dead Julia on his life being ruined. This is all your fault! Claire, honey, I think you need to leave. He tries to work things out with Claire and he crashes his car. Jeez, these later seasons of Degrassi really are dramatic, aren't they? Next season, Eli is back straight faced and has no emotions because he started taking these pills that were prescribed by his therapist. But Claire gets upset. I'm upset! Eli still got the hots for Claire, but Imogen is in love with Eli, so we'll deal with that for a bit. Hello, Claire Edwards. Imogen is the one to convince Eli to make that weird play, Love Roulette, about a high school love story gone wrong. It's about Claire and Eli. She'll realize losing me is the biggest mistake she ever made. She'll never doubt you again. What are you talking about? Just always seemed like she second-guessed you. <laughs> like when? Like Vegas night. That happened months ago. <laughs> Have you been stalking me? What? No! At the same time, Claire's kind of talking to Jake and Eli doesn't like him, obviously. Eli kisses Imogen and calls her Claire. Imogen now thinks that they're dating. Oh, honey. Don't you get it, Imogen? You are to me, but I'm to Claire and I'm nothing to her. Fast forward, Eli has a meltdown on stage and is going back to therapy. Just letting you guys know that Eli is bipolar. Eli and Imogen date, but it's mostly just a quick fling, and also Eli's still dealing with shit. Claire and Eli have been on better terms recently, though, and kiss. Yay! Eli still wants to do theater, but Mr. Simpson is a little worried because... So maybe try a musical this time, but Eli makes the play Romeo and Jules, two dudes. And local Degrassi nun Becky is mad. Eli and Claire having problems, where have we heard this before? But then Claire eventually tells him what happened with that Asher creep. Around the same time, Dallas has been having troubles with Eli, Claire, and Jake, so a big ass brawl breaks out of Fiona's house. Oh, and Jake and Eli start smoking weed together, man. But then Eli finds out Claire used to be in love with Jake after violating her privacy and reading her diary. Eli finds one of his younger classmates dead in the garden and it messes with his head a lot. Right now, him going out with Claire isn't helping either because she keeps reminding him. It's not fair that you had to be the one to find him. But it happened. And we can't ignore what's going on with you because of it. There is a right way and a wrong way to deal with things. Before you start commenting that Claire was only trying to help, I understand and I agree with you, but it's still triggering Eli because this man is mentally suffering. Like a lot, this guy's seriously going through it. I may be on drugs right now. You do realize that you are showering with your clothes on in the girls' change room right now? What the hell are you thinking? For once, nothing! Eli. Remember when you said that you wouldn't have sex with me because you thought I was damaged? What? Do I look damaged to you? <laughs> I'm a freaking superhero! I feel fantastic! I wanna fuck something! Leave Mr. Simpson alone. Shortly after, Eli breaks up with Claire. The fuck kind of love story is this? For prom, Eli wants to go out with Claire again, but then this random ass motherfucker Cliff comes in, and Claire asks him to the prom. Who are you? Cliff, or home date. Who are you? I'm the guy who almost got stabbed a year ago and also recently just ran through the school naked. Where the fuck have you been, Cliff? Cliff is gay though and encourages Claire to make up with Eli and then they make up and get busy and get back together. Rinse and repeat, okay. Eli goes to college and they have bad communication. Also, Eli cheats on Claire. And also, Claire is kind of liking Drew right now. It's over, Eli. They break up again. <laughs> Eli walks in on Claire and Drew making out and gets mad. That's got to be it, right? Nope. Eli comes home and works at the dot. Eli punches Drew in the face because he hates him. Also, Claire is pregnant. How could you not tell me? Because it's Drew's. You are not. 
And then Eli is really fucked up to Claire. You don't get to come here anytime you want for a chat. Not after you ruined everything. And for what? So you could jump into bed with Drew Torres? Tears, Claire? Didn't expect to see those from such a whore. You wouldn't believe it, but they got back together. Also, Claire has a miscarriage. Eli and Claire are still together at the end of season 14, which is Eli's final season. If you guys haven't noticed already, pretty much every class has a common theme. 2006 is the beginning, obviously. 2007 revolves primarily around Emma and Manny. 2008 fucking sucks. And 2011 is mostly well-rounded, including most of the supporting characters, except for Blue. No one remembers Blue. In this class, all of these characters came into Degrassi in the later years of their school time. Seriously, all of these students just pop in. In my opinion, this works the best with Eli's character, mostly because his mysteriousness helps build up his story. But I think the other characters kind of suffered from this. It almost feels like Degrassi had to speed through the simpler and funny stories that happened in the earlier seasons and replace them with constant drama and depressing sadness. I will say that the later seasons of Degrassi definitely have better storylines than the earlier seasons, especially before season 3, but I think the characters from the earlier seasons are a lot more memorable than a lot of these newer ones. Also, holy shit, these seasons are long as fuck. Last thing I want to add in here, I haven't done this in my previous videos, but I, I think I should. My favorite character from this class was Bianca. I pretty much loved every story she was in, and her growth as a character was so entertaining to me. So let me know who your favorite character from this class one, and if you stuck around this far, leave a like, and I'll see you next time discussing the class of 2014. Oh shit, more Claire and Eli. Girls like us don't need guys like that lingering around. Besides, you're better than him. Oops. I'm soaked. Owen! Sorry, babe. Defective squeeze bottle. 